Yes, yes, you are welcome back. This is still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. And of course, you know, I still remain if you Lua she can. And the squad, of course, is still with me. And yes, you know, I would do it on the show. You never know what's coming next. And yes, coming up right about now is a super duper guest. And she goes by the name Susan Ade Koka, who is an entrepreneur and social media influencer. Aside from being an influencer, she is a fashion designer and also into property management. She's an enthusiast and well known for her Facebook group, Rant HQ which was created in the UK after quitting our job. She began doing it full-time and the business side of things had to be addressed. She began conducting charitable work and has visited numerous orphanages throughout Nigeria. Susan has owned the ability to use the group's large membership to provide generosity to a wide range of persons in need of governmental aid in dealing with significant health issues. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome the phenomenal Susan Adeko. How you doing, Suzanne? Hey, Susan. Hi, Susan. Is Susan there? Okay, so why will... Hi, Susan. Can you hear us? Hi, uh... Okay, guys. Let's... All right, so um, we'll be moving on while we wait for Susan to join us. Um, we'll be talking about one story before okay. Susan comes. Okay, so we saw that out right already. Back. All right, okay, so, okay, they're telling me Susan is back. Susan, what's up? Did you hear your introduction? Hi, hi. What's How up? you doing? Yes, 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 yes. We wanted to hype you. We wanted you in the building. How you doing, Susan? Hello. First I'm thing. very well, thank you. And thanks for having me. You Hi, lady. Hey, girl. <laughs> All right, so first thing first, Susan, what is your drive? Because, you know, a lot of people don't do things like, you know, you started Rant HQ because, you know, you were bored and you just wanted to do something with your time and, you know, using your data wisely, as we know, it's not cheap in this part of the world. But, you know, it became something super big and you've been able to help a lot of people from that platform. Tell us. What is your drive? I think it's like my personality. Mm. When I'm somewhere, I am there. I put in everything. I'm just doing whatever I need to do. I think it's a sense of responsibility. Because mm. at the beginning, I actually wanted to close it when it became like a thousand members in a couple of days, I was going to close it. And a friend of mine said, no, don't close it. So I thought, okay, this is a responsibility. And then I went on, I started, you know, as things happened, I started doing it. I started doing it. I started doing it. Um, whenever something comes up, like, you know, when we do Monday business, I thought, okay, why are people gathering together? Then let's, let's try and make some meaning to this being mm. together. So I thought, okay, so let's try and um, network, let people advertise, let people do stuff. Mm. So, yeah, it's just a sense of responsibility and then also with the humanitarian, you know, um, um, interventions and activities. It was mainly out of um, people wanting to get together. They said, oh, let's, let's have a party. I'm not a party person. It's not like if you call me to, to a party, I will not attend. But the thing is, I just want something meaningful. Do you mm. understand? You know, I thought, okay, let's just, let me just use the opportunity to make something tangible. So when they say, oh, they want to have a party and a, um, a get-together, I thought, okay, fine. We'll have a party, we'll have a get-together on the condition that we'll do something for humanity. I don't know if you guys can hear me, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah we can hear you loud and clear. We're just listening. Okay. Okay, so that's the thing. It's a sense of responsibility. And I think Ranted Q brought out a lot of my personality that I never knew existed. Mm. Um, yes, I'm a bit of a, like, I don't really use the word stubborn person, but when I have a conviction, I stay with it, regardless of whether or not people agree with me, as long as I'm convinced that what I'm doing is right, I stay with it. I, I stay the cause. And, you know, I don't even care if it's a million people against me, as long as I know what I am doing is great, I stick with it. So, yeah. 
Amazing. All so right. that's my drive, really. And of course, I cannot take this away from God Almighty. I believe till today that God is the inspiration behind Ryan's yeah. HQ. You yeah. couldn't have me. I don't even like talking to people. I'm that kind of a person that I don't need my neighbors to say hello to me. Don't say hello to me. You can just go your way. Do you understand? <laughs> but I feel when it comes to Ryan's HQ and attending to people and attending to people, this fire inside me is not from me. I mean, when I come into my flat, when I come into my apartment, I don't even want my staff to talk to me. My mm. team members don't talk to me. Let everybody just leave me alone. But when <laughs> it comes to ranting, it's just that dry. It's not even up to yeah. me. Yeah, that explains why you're here behind the that, crane. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's that drive. So I can't take it away from God. I believe solely that it's from God. Absolutely. Right. Okay, so um, I want to know, though, if you can give us a just like an image of what your life looked like before you started that, like, what were you doing? Because it seems like you're, mm. you're quite driven by, um, what's the word now? Okay. You're, you're, you're quite driven by purpose and vision and, you know, some kind of meaning to things. You like that. So I'm just, trying to, I'm just wondering now, before you founded um, Rant HQ, what then were you doing? And now that you have this thing that God has obviously given you and you've really found your sweet, sweet spot and it's taken a life of its own, is that all that you do now? And um, is there anything else that you're doing on the side? So I just want to know what your life looked like before and now. Okay. My life before I was a mom, when I had my third child, who is um, 16 years old now, when she was a baby, I was at home with three kids and all that. And I was watching Oprah and I, I saw four women came up and said, they started, uh, they were sitting at home mom and they started a cleaning business. Hmm. And I just... I tried out for the Filipino cleaner and blah, blah, blah. I did that. And I started from this stretch, very long stretch of road behind my um, behind my house. It's a Dolly Sale, Northwest London. And I printed quite a number of these. And I started putting in the letter boxes. And so I was, you know, offering cleaning services. And I thought, oh, if I'm doing um, domestic service, uh, domestic cleaning, why don't I start doing uh, professional cleaning and stuff like that. So I moved from there and then I started, I mean, this was in the space of three months. And then I sat by six months, seven months, I already had like maybe 90 staff that I was doing. And then I went on to start um, uh, supplying alcohol hotels for the staff and things like that. And then I moved on from that and then I moved on to property management. So that's what I'm doing. That This is the thing. I'm a fashion designer. I learned how to make clothes. My mom did, mm. you know, just stop me from going to play during holidays. But I, you know, I think it's a thing about me. Whatever I find myself, I'm, a, I'm always trying to look better. I have this natural energy mm. from God of that he's given me. So whatever I do, I tend to like just, you know, push myself and push myself. I've pushed myself. So that's basically what has come up. So that's what I was doing in the UK. And then Rant HQ started. I, of course, I'll bought them. Um, and, but now that is what I do. However, I still bring that person mm. of myself. Mm. Now, the property management that I was doing. Now I found an opportunity. This is a platform. Basically, what I'm the other stuff that I do with the fashion, which I learned, and property management. I'm basically leveraging on my platform. You know, just um, kind of being grateful to the, for the opportunity that I have. So I'm able to do stuff. You know, with the blog, I'm able to employ others with all. You know, those who are in training. So I'm just basically leveraging on the platform that God has given me, really. So this all is right. what I do now. This is all I do. All right. Everything I do is around Rant HQ. All okay. righty. Thank you very okay. much. I'm so, sure Nima um, has a question. Ma, how do you um, gather support, like financial support, for individuals that need your help from Rant HQ? Because we know that it's not easy in Nigeria to actually get, like, financial aid and, you know, support from people. So how do you get people to actually help mm. people on that platform? <laughs> Yeah. Again, I put it down to God. This is the thing. Every time we have yeah. something to do, yes, we do call out for help when we mm. needed anything. All the places we've been to, we ask for help. But by the grace of God, most of these things have been majorly self-funded. Mm. And I am not rich. I tell you, I am wow. so not rich. Sometimes yeah. I have zero. In fact, two weeks ago, I had zero, zero, zero in my account. Mm. But the thing is, whenever these things come up, God has a way. That's just something that comes up. There's yeah. something that comes up. 
I'm not rich, but I'm never, ever, ever in need. God always mm. provides. So one. we also Day ask one. the members of public to help us. The more we get, the more we can do. Help like people. now in August, we have something we want to do. But I'm, I'm thinking, God, please let me sell a house quickly so that we can have this event because yeah. we want to... We want to look after like 2,000 people and give them free medical. This is the okay. thing. It is yeah. not the Living in Nigeria is not the easiest. All right. I mean, I have seen it, <clears throat> you know, every, I've seen it, I've seen it. So if we can pull our way, if people help, and God has also blessed me with. All right. So I think we lost the right there. Some of are you, I can us. hear us. Are you there? Oh, yeah, I'm here. All I right, just I mean, went right in the way. I didn't please know you were We lost too. you for a second. Just go on. <laughs> <laughs> just go on. We lost you for I a think... second. Oh. Yes. Okay, so I was saying that most of the stuff we do, um, the self-funded, I have my admins who support me as well. Yeah. Also, there are some of the members who support me. But I wish we can have people put a lot of weight behind us, not only financially, but by the presence, by, you know, helping us with the brands. Like in August, we have an event that we want to do, a medical outreach Alrighty. for 2,000 people. So, All right. if we so can get up, that would be great. Amazing. Yeah. So, experience has taught me to just be telling you to speak in bullet points. <laughs> right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, I'm going to be asking you, you know, three questions, right? Okay, just one question, but I need three responses. So, you need to tell me the pros and Cons, you know, being um, able to do a, and achieve all of those things from social media. Can you tell me um, the pros and cons of social media? So, what are some of the advantages of social media, and what are some of the disadvantages? Speaking from a you know personal standpoint. From personal standpoint, I don't believe social in bullet points. Remember. Let me go. <laughs> Let me tell you why. <laughs> Let me tell you why. Right. Life is for living. Right. You live wherever you find yourself. True. Mm -hmm. If social media is working for you, do it. But in this day and age, we live in the life of social media. Right. How you conduct yourself has nothing to do with anyone. It's got nothing to do with all the pros and the cons. No. As long as you're alive, you live. Mm. And we live the life and the time of social media. Right. And that's the way I see it. All right, so you're not going to give us three points. All right, that works. That works. I think it will be better. Thank you very much. So, you know, you were talking about, you know, in case people want to help and they want to know exactly what you're doing and they want to make donations, you know, we're going to give you the platform to just tell us about your brand and um, not, not basic. You don't come on market here. Oh. Please just tell I'm us not market, where can we know. find you on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, not... you know, just tell us those basic ones. Then from there, we'll DM you. Just tell us those ones. <laughs> <laughs> bro. Yeah, bro. I don't market myself. I this my my stuff just go out. But this mm. is God. God. It, it is God. <laughs> it is God. I I attribute it to God. <laughs> All right, man. So just tell us where we can find you, real quick, please. In okay. Wants so to reach out. I am on social media. Right. I am on Instagram at Adeko uh, at Adeko Castuza. All right. Or you can find me on Facebook. Right. I have a verified Facebook page, so you can DM me there. You can send me a message. If you remember, I have like seven groups that you can message. Just send me some, just you know, you can get me there. If that Instagram, definitely right. face my account. All right, you've been far too kind, Mrs. Susan Adeko Carr. Thank you very much for Thank joining you so us much. on the show Tea Time. Thank and you, ladies. Thank, thank you, guys. You. Yes, thank yes. you so much for having thank me. Thank you. Always a pleasure to have you. And yes, Tea Time will be going on a quick music break, and we will definitely be right back. Go nowhere. <laughs>